and Coach Johnny Toombs. Brought to you by Athletic Supply, Davis Shoes, Luther Bells, Jimmy Cobb Insurance, Texacana Athletic Club, Regency House, McGuire Sound, Photomation, Coca-Cola Bottling Company, Or Chevrolet, Texacana Immediate Care, Raffaele Realty, Hunter Power Saw, American National Bank, White's Glenwood House, Pepsi Cola Modeling Company, Hopkins Econo Mart, Teachers Credit Union, Daily Fence Company, Ramblin' Rose Forest, and Tony Wiltshire Company. Welcome to Pleasant Grove Hawk Football with Athletic Director and Head Football Coach Johnny Toombs. Last Friday night, a so-so defensive battle in some respects, but Pleasant Grove came up with a 19 to nothing win over the Queen City Bulldogs. They had five turnovers, Johnny, in the favor of Pleasant Grove and took those turnovers and added points on the scoreboard. Well, we felt like it was a total team effort and a total team victory. We played well offensively. We had another great defensive outing. The kicking game, the specialty teams did a super job, and we're very pleased with the result of the ball game. This is your second shutout of the 1986 season, and I know you're players, your defensive players and coaches are real proud of that. Well, we talked all week long about uh, trying to get the second shutout, and the seniors made up their mind last Friday night before the game. We reminded them they got to shut out their first home game their senior year, and they said they were going to finish the last home game off with a shutout also, and, and they were able to do that. We were talking earlier this morning uh, about uh, if we could throw out that uh, game earlier this year where there were 50 points scored against Pleasant Grove, you would probably letting up less than 10 points a game by your defense. Well, we haven't really figured that out, but I'm sure that would be probably true with the exception of the Jefferson ball game. Uh, only one team has scored in double figures on us. Of course, Lennon Kildare got 14, and, and the defense has done a super job, and the offense have been, has been very opportunistic and has scored when the opportunity's been there, and, uh, and last Friday night they did the same thing. So we're extremely proud of our youngsters. I know last uh, Friday night was the last uh, home game of 86. I know the players really want to bring that victory home. And you had a total offense of about 143 yards, but the 19 points and none for Queen City was the really big thing. Well, we played kind of close to the best again on offense, as usual. We didn't want to turn the ball over. We felt like uh, uh, Queen City would have some problems offensively putting points on the board if we didn't give them the ball on the iron of the field. So we were very conservative. We had three defensive plays and a good punt return that uh, gave us opportunity to score, and we were able to get all of them on the, on the board, and that's what counted. David Fawcett had two interceptions, and Steve Culling had one, and really those, all those three interceptions were pretty key, uh, key turnovers for y'all. They were. I think we turned uh, at, at least two of the interceptions into touchdowns later, and uh, we had, a, as I mentioned, a punt return by Van, set up another one, got us to midfield, and and we didn't, uh, we didn't have a very explosive night offensively. We didn't have the big rushing stats that we usually have. But there again, when the opportunity presented itself, the uh, offensive team put the points on the board and the defensive team had another yeoman's night of work. And so it was a very good team effort for us. In the 15-3A, there's really going to be quite a change this week in standings. Anything can happen between now and the final game. Well, you know, goodness, who knows? I don't know how many teams still have a mathematical chance at the uh, playoffs. Uh, Hooks and Linden both have one loss each, and they're in first place. And uh, DeKalb and the Hawks now are with a loss and a tie are in second place. Atlanta and Hugh Springs with two losses are still in the race also. So it's still a six-team race, and anything can happen. And there's one surprise after another each week. And, and now, as a result of last Friday night, we don't have to depend on anyone else to, to do our job for us. If the Hawks can win their remaining three games, we're going to be in the playoffs. It's still a situation where you're having to take it one game at a time. We have a big ball game next week against the Atlanta Rabbits, and we can't look any further than that. And uh, we can briefly enjoy the victory over Queen City and then get back to work for the next one. We've got a lot of action coming your way for this first half. But first, these words from our fine sponsors. You know, giving yourself a gift for the home sure makes a lot of sense these days, especially when you have to watch your budget like Deborah and I do. It's really the only practical thing to do at Christmas time. Our new dining group is already here for us to enjoy now, through the holidays, and for years to come. So when you want more, so when you want more than just a furniture store, it's White's Glenwood House. 
American National Bank is your full-service bank. For your convenience, our drive through windows open from 7.30 to 6 weekdays and 9 till noon on Saturdays. As the financial leader in Northwest Texarkana, American National Bank offers interest-bearing checking accounts, money market accounts, IRAs, CDs, and will assist you for your mortgage loan, automobile, personal, or commercial loan. Deposit or withdraw at your convenience with Max 24. American National Bank, 2301 Richmond Road, member FDIC. Hi, this is Men in the Pop Quiz. And what I want to know is, Swagger, where does the refreshing new phrase, Catch the Wave, come from? Pips off! Obviously, Cocologists. Blindfold, please. Huh. Quicker next time. In blind taste tests, which pop drink did more people prefer? The new taste of Coke or Pepsi? Pepsi! Wrong. Mm, I love trick questions. Coke! Coke. The new taste of Coke. It's true. You heard it here first. C catch the wave. Coke. Perfect football weather for a Friday night ball game, Johnny. Last 86 home game for Pleasant Grove. Yeah, it was. It was a little crispy. It was a, a very nice uh, night. And you see 19 seniors standing out there, Gary, that we're certainly going to miss next year. Being the last home ball game, uh, of course, Trace Warren and Bill Stone are our captains for the, for the season, but all 19 seniors went out, and there's some fine talent and some great kids in that group. The uh, Hawks set the tone for the ball game early with a good kickoff coverage and then three good defensive plays, a big hit there by, Trace, uh, by Todd Hyron on a stunt, and then Ed Zed knocks the third down pass down, and uh, the Hawks are fired up and really ready to play. And Van Morris does a good job catching the punt. Uh, Hugh Springs, or excuse me, Queen City had a good punter, and Van did a good job catching the football to keep us in relatively good field position. The Hawks are going to come out, as we've done so many times during the season, and they're going to have a good opening drive. Tony Wilshire to the right, and then Todd Hyron on first down, and trying to mix it up a little, and Scott Eichhorn back to the left. And the offensive line, Bill Stone, and Jimmy Townsend, Jerry Moody, Mike Young, and Tommy Welch and tight end Chad Davis and uh, David Oliver did a real good job blocking. Tony breaks there and this is a big third down carry for the first down. The Hawks are on the move. We're going to have uh, our only penalty of the night, a five yards offside penalty to stop the drive. David Fawcett on the option on the keep and uh, that was our only penalty of the night and we, we bogged down and had to kick the football away and Kenny Davis just did a tremendous job. We almost killed this one on the one. That's uh, uh, Craig Schultz and Steve Cullen down there, but we knocked it into the end zone, and Queen City breaks on the first play. The defense just played tremendously again. Uh, Mark Hawkins and, and Greg Knapp at the two techniques. Defensive end, Mike Kyles and Ed Zid. And you see just a whole host of Hawks in on that tackle. Trace Warren also on that tackle. Trace Warren and uh, Craig Schultz and Todd Hyren at the linebacking position. We were very concerned about Queen City's passing, and I think they completed five passes. The secondary, David Fawcett, Van Morris, Steve Cullen, John Daly did just an outstanding job. They had a big, strong quarterback. You see there, we were having a hard time getting him down, but uh, the defense gave up three or four big running plays, but other than that, they just constantly controlled the line all night long as the first quarter comes to an end with no score. Defense first quarter all the way, no scoring at all by either team. And Queen City has uh, made a move here. They're down inside our 35. Uh, Mike Kyle's here chasing the quarterback out of the pocket, and David Fawcett just makes a tremendous interception. He wasn't 10 yards from the quarterback, and he, he nearly broke all the way. The last man knocked him out on the 44, and we're going to take the ball and hammer it in. Good run here by Wilshire, moves down inside the 40. Uh, Todd Hyer and hammering down to about the 30. Offsides on Queen City, which we accepted, gave us a first down. Tony again on our off tackle play. Uh, that's our bread and butter play, and we're going to run that in crucial situations. Howard again, uh, mixing the plays up pretty well. The kids blocking hard, no mistakes. One of our goals was not to make any turnovers. Here's the touchdown run, a 19-yarder by Howard. Tremendous blocks by Bill Stone. Uh, Jimmy Townsend and Chad Davis downfield set that one, uh, broke that one loose, and Brian Baker kicked the first extra point. Todd Hyron broke several tackles there to score, and that's a 19 yard run he gets credit for. 19 yard run for the touchdown, and uh, we're going to make the tackle here. I believe that was Kyles and uh, Simpson on the kickoff, and Queen City blocked below the way, so they're going to start back on their own 10 yard line. Mike Kyles again on another big play, stands the runner up and gets help 
uh, from the rest of the Hawks. There's Greg Knapp on a big play. The option play, we let the quarterback loose and uh, had to make the tackle in the secondary, but we are able to hold him. Man lets the ball hit, which we don't like, but then he makes a catch on the good bounce and breaks for some 17 yards. Paul Lubri made a big block on that, but took out two Queen City defenders. And uh, after we sputtered here for a play or two, we're going to come up on third down, and David Fawcett's going to hit David Oliver here on a big pass. I tell you, I wish we'd had this combination for three years. David, uh, David Oliver's making me look good on that decision. There were some eyebrows raised when we moved him to wide receiver, but uh, you know, you put a slow, skinny senior split in, but he is a winner. And David Fawcett got the ball there well, and uh, Scott Eichhorn dives over to the one, and then Fawcett slips over for the touchdown. And Brian missed the extra point, pushed it to the right, and that leaves it 13 to zero. But we feel like right now we're in good shape controlling the ball game. I asked the uh, youngsters for the game to get us a 14 to nothing lead at halftime, and, uh, and they came awfully close. I'm going to ask for more than that next week and see if we can get more. John Dudley was back there and just almost intercepted that last pass. Our secondary played very well. We had a lot of interceptions against Hugh Springs last week, but we, we had too many receivers open, didn't play that well. But uh, they really played a solid ball game. We can't think of any phase of our game, Gary, that was not solid Friday night. I noticed Mark Hawkins on this particular play just while I go made a rig rush on the quarterback. Here's that halfback option that uh, halfback makes the throw and intercepted by uh, Steve Cullen. Steve Cullen doing a good job in center field along with John Daly and, uh, and gets the return. Ooh, and boy, boy. A tremendous hit tremendous. there. Their middle linebacker, Stan Polk, hit John Daly. And, Lucky for John, he was in the air, and he, he told us uh, Saturday morning that that one didn't hurt, but it hurt me to watch it. 13 nothing at halftime, and uh, certainly something that uh, your goal was to try to get a 14 nothing lead. You came within one point shy of that, but certainly something to be proud of for going that last half. Well, you know, we told them that we would like to have at least a 14 point uh, first half effort, and uh, you know, to get our offense untracked a little bit, and. And they did take opportunity or take advantage of the opportunities they had. And, and we, it's not a very comfortable feeling. 13 to nothing can change real quick, but we were pleased at halftime. You had the uh, turnovers there in the first half that certainly were big and which led to touchdowns. Well, David Fawcett's interception really seemed to turn it around for us. It gave us an opportunity to start in relatively good field position on the Queen City 45. And then Van's 17-yard punt return got us to midfield, which allows us to, to open up a little bit more. Uh, we're just not going to take a lot of chances on offense on our end of the field doing things that we don't do as well as we do uh, running the football. And, and any time we get good field position, it really aids our cause a lot. I noticed that uh, it seemed that uh, Queen City were keying on uh, Tony Wiltshire, and uh, therefore he was not able to break some big runs, but still got some good yardage. Well, Tony has been our leading ground gainer, of course, all year long. And, and the four and a half ball games that he played in before last Friday night, he had some 530 or 40 yards rushing. And his rushing total was down Friday night, but uh, Scott Icorn and, and uh, Todd Hiron picked up the pace a little bit and contributed enough to offset that. Tony lost about 15 yards, I think, on his last two carries. He had a fumble, and then he tried to reverse his field a time or two, and that hurt his total. But uh, it was a well-balanced ball game for us offensively. We didn't throw that many times, but the one big pass, of course, also, also helped a lot. We still got a lot of action coming your way for the last half, but first, these messages. Some real estate agents have only one sales tool, and even though they keep hammering away with it, they don't always get the results you'd hope for. But our company has a comprehensive home marketing system with a very simple benefit. It works. Better Homes and Gardens, the better way to sell your home. For a free, no-obligation home market analysis, call Raffaele Realtor 794-3322, also displaying homes for sale or lease at our new office in Central Mall. We all like to save money and want to get the very best value. That's why I buy all of my jewelry from Luther Bells in Central Mall. If you're shopping for jewelry, I encourage you to visit Luther Bells before you make your final decision. I know when I buy from Luther Bells, I've gotten the best quality for the price. When you're shopping for jewelry, stop by Luther Bells and you'll see what I mean. Luther Bells in Texarkana. Daily Fence Company, serving Texarkana with quality in the board and chain fencing business, now offers cloth awnings at an unbelievable price. 
for patios, storefronts, even windows. Enhance the beauty of your home or business with durable awnings. Regulate the warmth and brilliance of the sun with a wide variety of colors and styles to choose from. Call today. Free estimates are planning service. Satisfaction is guaranteed. Cloth Awnings, now at Daily Fence Company. Call 838-7892. For quite some time now, we've been telling you that Orr Chevrolet beats them all. Now, we guarantee it. Or Chevy in Texarkana will beat any advertised price on any new Chevrolet car or truck. That simply means that you're sure to get the best deal at Orr Chevrolet. Just bring us any ad for any dealer anywhere in the Arklatex, and Orr Chevy will beat that advertised price. Now, more than ever, at Orr Chevrolet, we beat them all. Third quarter starting with the Pleasant Grove Hawks be kicking to Queen City with a 13-0 lead for Pleasant Grove, Johnny. Yeah, and of course the Hawks are receiving this kickoff. Okay. It took a funny bounce. Jeff White was able to get on the ball. We start on about the 24. The, uh, the offense came out a little lackadaisical here in the third quarter. We felt like it would be really important to punch another one in and, and get the comfortable three-touchdown lead, but we were unable to move the ball. We cautioned them at halftime about not turning the ball over and giving Queen City an easy score, so perhaps that uh, kind of lulled them to sleep a little bit. But uh, the Hawks come out and make a good defensive effort early, and uh, we're going to force Queen City to kick the ball away, I believe. Uh, there's a good hit there. I'm sorry, this is the one they get the first down on. Craig Schultz finally, finally puts the finishing touches on the runner from Queen City there, and then they're going to break another one. Uh, but a holding call that will bring that one back. They hit a real quick uh, little hitch pass, and the, the runner breaks all the way to the other side of the field, but we have people over there waiting on him, and he only made about a yard gain out of it. Then on third down, they hit one of their pass completions and keep the drive going down, I believe, inside the Hawk 40-yard line. Good pressure there from Mike Kyles, and I believe uh, Greg Knapp was there, and on the high snap, the Hawks put a lot of pressure on the punter, and he's not able to get the kick off, and even though we do make, miss some tackles, we're able to keep him from getting the first down, and we get good field position on the 45. A lot of hitting out there, Johnny, a lot of tough defense. It was a very intense ball game, a lot of emotions, uh, a lot of hard hitting, and we had some very sore, bunged up youngsters over the weekend as a result. And, uh, you know, we took a lot of uh, solid contact, and we dished a lot out, too. It was just an old-fashioned head-knocking football game. This is a great uh, cutback here by the Queen City youngster. He's the over to Sue, and this youngster's name is Rockamore. He's a good football player, and Van Marsh does a very good job of fighting two or three blockers off, keeping him in front, and finally driving him out on the 20-yard line. It's a crucial point in the ball game. We're ahead 13-0, to zero, but a quick score by Queen City, you know, it's right back to a close ball game. But the defense rose up and uh, made two big plays and, and then uh, stopped the quarterback short on fourth down, and we're going to take over on the 15. And I believe this is late in the third quarter, and the offense is going to uh, use quite a bit of time here, which really helped. Todd Hiring up uh, in the middle, and as the fourth quarter starts, of course, the score remains 13-0, to zero, but we're going to run some six or seven minutes off. Good run here by Tony. Good blocking by the offensive line. And Scott Icorn on the handback. Counter dive, another big play. Uh, Scott makes good yardage on him. So we're accomplishing two things. We're keeping the ball on the ground and moving it and running the clock too, but we, uh, we fall a little short, and Kenny just makes a great punt. Steve Cullen, Craig Schultz, uh, Chad Dodson down to recover inside the 10. We really got Queen City backed up in the hole now. They had bad field position most of the game to the Johnny. Well, they really did. We didn't turn it over on our end, and there's another great interception by David Fawcett. Just had a tremendous ball game, and look at this great run by Tony. Offensive lineman blocking about a seven-yard run, and uh, we don't convert on the two-point conversion, but now it's pushed it to 19 to zero, and we're breathing a little easier right now. And it's in the fourth quarter, too, and that um, it takes three scores. Right, and Queen City is not an explosive offensive team that's going to be able to score three quick ones, so you know, we're still not celebrating, but we feel a lot better. It's good pressure by Kyles and Hiron. Tackle by Fawcett, and the ball pops loose. Greg Knapp knocked it loose, and I don't know yet who recovered it, but it was one of the two fumble recoveries. Uh, Tony fumbles the pitch here, and David uh, Oliver recovers, which is a 15-yard loss, and that goes on Tony's rushing yardage. Scott Icorn breaks through for some of his 32 yards. And 
Kenny Davis again just gets the ball off real fast. Kenny doesn't kick the ball an awful long way. In fact, we've got youngsters who probably kick it further than Kenny. But he, he's real consistent, and he gets it off real quick, and he's not really as big a threat to have it blocked as some of the others are, and we're real pleased with our kicking game. This youngster here made a good catch. Uh, referee, uh, I don't know if he forgot that he was on, the, on his knees or what, but they brought it back. Chad Davis on a big pass rush, knocks the ball loose, and Paul Ubre, uh recovers, and we're able to put uh, some more youngsters in the ball game. Here's Van Morris on a run, Todd Martin's quarterbacking, uh, uh, John Hodges in the secondary, Todd on the keeper here for the first down, or rather John Hodges one of the running backs, and this is uh, toward the end of the ball game. In fact, that was the last play of the ball game, and emotions were high, and there was a little scuffle or two, but uh, we came out on top of the hard-fought 19 to nothing victory. Very important victory for Pleasure Grove, as much as now they're 2-1-1 in one their 15-3A, but really leaves the door open for anyone in this particular conference to win it, or at least make the playoffs. There's six teams that still have a, a very reasonable shot at the playoffs. Uh, we've lost one and tied one, and we can't afford to lose another one or, or we'll be eliminated, but uh, it's still possible that a team could lose two and, and get in the playoffs. But, uh, you know, we all we can do is take care of our business one week at a time. It's not really as important now what happens to some of the other teams as it is, is that we just keep on winning. And if we win our remaining three, then there will be an 11th ball game. We told our seniors uh, Friday night after the game they wanted to wear their black jerseys again, and we, and we told them the opportunity's there. If they win three, then maybe that 11th day we can wear black again somewhere down the line. There were some key games this last Friday night in the 15-3A that uh, saw some teams that you would have thought would win get upset. Well, Lyndon Kildare, I don't, it, it was, I suppose, an upset, although it was a, you know, predicted to be a very close game. But Hugh Springs beat Lyndon 8-7 to seven at Hugh Springs. Uh, of course, Hooks rolled over New Boston, scoring a lot of points. And then Atlanta just completely stunned Lyndon Kildare. Uh, DeKay, I beat them 22-21. to 21, And, you know, Atlanta kind of threw their hat in the ring. They had a very tough non-conference schedule and a lot of youngsters, and they've really jailed, and they're a good football team now. So... So it's amazing. I think our conference is a lot like the Southwest Conference in the college ranks. It's just any given night somebody can knock someone off, and we have to keep our heads straight and our eyes straight ahead and, and just be ready every week. It was a tough ball game last Friday night as far as uh, tough play between both sides of the line, and uh, how are your injuries right now? Well, we have some youngsters that are, that are hurting a little bit this week. Uh, Mark Hawkins broke a bone in his forearm and has a cast on his arm, but the doctor said he would be able to play. Uh, Mike Young, our offensive tackle, has a nerve problem in the shoulder. We thought maybe he'd separated the shoulder, but it is just a nerve problem. And, and Mike will be out uh, of practice all week and is very questionable for, for Friday night. Trace Warren got a uh, foot in the eye and has a, a tremendous shiner. He has a beautiful black eye, and uh, his eye is swollen shut. And we don't know if Trace is going to have any vision problems this next week or not. And uh, we have several youngsters that have some... Uh, some eye problems and some cuts on the chins and some aches and some bruises, but uh, they don't feel nearly as bad as they would have if we hadn't won the ball game. So I, I'm sure it's a, it's a good pain that they're feeling right now. Well, the uh, Pleasant Grove Hawks will be traveling to Atlanta next week, and we'll talk more about that after these messages. Okay, Jonathan, we're sending you back in time. Before television, radio, even before soft drinks. Careful, anything you do could change history. Mom's the word. Activate time travel mode to the year 1885. He's there. I hey, with my Pepsi. <laughs> it's... Oh, no. He took it. Relax, Smith. What could 12 ounces of Pepsi possibly change? Yeah, what could happen? <laughs> Pepsi, the choice of a new generation. In a world of ordinary mowers, top customers look for the extraordinary, which isn't easy to find, until you come to errands. Errands gives you variable speed control, folding handlebars, more bagging capacity, and more years of service. Errands makes being tough. Crazy. Errands, the easy choice for tough customers. Available at Hunter Power Saw Company, 4810 West 7th, Highway 67, Texarkana. Tony Wiltshire and all the folks at Tony Wiltshire Company hope you're enjoying these Pleasant Grove Hawks telecasts each week. Thus far in 1986, our Hawks have shown the courage and spirit so necessary to the building of an outstanding football program. Congratulations to Coach Johnny Toombs, to all of the Hawks coaching staff, and of course to the Pleasant Grove Hawks on their victories this year. 
Know, too, that we're with you all the way, regardless of the outcome of each game. Get those tickets. Come out and support the Pleasant Grove Hawks football team in 1986. This last uh, six weeks in the state of Texas, the no pass, no play situation comes up. Johnny, how does uh, Pleasant Grove stand? Well, we stand. We came out very well in it. Our youngsters are very academically oriented and very conscientious about their work. Uh, we didn't lose anyone on the varsity, and we had a couple of JV youngsters that stumped their toes a little bit. But our faculty has been a tremendous asset over the last two or three years to us on that. Our teachers do not hesitate to, to come up to us if a youngster is not performing to the best of their ability, and we try to help the teachers motivate them. And, uh, uh, the faculty has been very good about that, and we sincerely appreciate their efforts in uh, uh, you know, trying to keep the, the kids on the right track. But uh, it was a very big hurdle for a lot of football teams in Texas, and a lot of them will just be devastated and wiped out by it. In fact, I know of a couple of schools that had to uh, discontinue because they were few in numbers and they lost so many youngsters they couldn't play the rest of their schedule. But it hasn't been a problem for us over the years, and uh, you know, hopefully our academic standards will remain high enough that we'll be able to get through that conflict every year. Next Friday night, you travel to Atlanta to take on the Rabbits, and certainly always kind of a big ball game between these two rivalries the last three years. Well, we had a real close battle last year. Of course, Atlanta has a new coaching staff. Uh, coach John Beecham is the new coach there, and he's done a very good job. They had just a, a, a very, very difficult non-conference schedule. They played Dangerfield and I believe Carthage, and I'm not sure who all, just some real big powers. And they lost the first three games by big margins, and they're, they're a young ball club, but they've gotten better every week, and I feel like they've gelled. And uh, they'll possibly be the team to beat next year, the preseason favorite next year, and, and we're going to have a big battle on our hands. The, the schedule is not really in the Hawks' favor. These next three weeks are all on the road. Again, as we mentioned earlier, you just have to take it one game at a time. One game at a time. The only thing we're worried about and the only thing we have on our mind right now is the Atlanta Rabbits, and it'll be a big 7.30 ball game next Friday night at, uh, at uh, Atlanta. Again, next Friday night, the Pleasant Grove Hawks will be traveling to Atlanta. So all you Pleasant Grove fans, be sure to make it uh, mark it on your calendar and attend that ball game at Atlanta. It's a 7.30 ball game, so you can leave Texas County about 6, 6.30, get there in plenty of time. Before we leave today, we're going to be going back to last Friday night's ball game and took a look, uh, look at Gary Cobb's Pride in Motion Pleasant Grove Band. Supply, Davis Shoes, Luther Bells, Jimmy Cobb Insurance, Texacana Athletic Club, Regency House, McGuire Sound, Photomation, Coca-Cola Bottling Company, Or Chevrolet, Texacana Immediate Care, Raffaelli Realty, Hunter Power Saw, American National Bank, White's Glenwood House, Pepsi Cola Bottling Company, Hopkins Economart. Teachers Credit Union, Daily Fence Company, Ramblin' Rose Forest, and Tony Wiltshire Company.